नमस्कार दोस्तों और जय हिंद आप सभी को स्वागत है इन माय चैनल 1971 वॉर बुक सीरीज आज हम बात करने वाले हैं अबाउट एन ऑफिसर जो अपना मिलिट्री करियर एक्चुअली स्टार्ट किए एज अ सेपॉय लेकिन ही कंजिक्यूटिवली रोज अप टू द रैंक्स ऑफ अ सीनियर जेसीओ और उसके बाद उनका कमीशनिंग हुआ एज एन ऑफिसर ऑफ द इंडियन आर्मी He took part in the Battle of Ganga Sagar in the Bangladesh Liberation War of 1971, or who were very close to with Lance Nike Albert Ekka, who was awarded the Padma Vir Chakra for his extreme sacrifice and gallantry on battle in the Battle of Ganga Sagar. A soldier from the 14 Guards, the Padma Vir Chakra Battalion of the Indian Army. Let's welcome Major Devendra Das. and let's hear the story from this man himself so welcome to our program where i have major devendra das here and he is from the 14 guards that actually took part in the bangladesh liberation war and he has also been wounded in battle so let's hear about his experiences directly from major das himself Good afternoon, Devdutti. Thank you, sir. Uh, I am very happy that you have given me a chance to speak something about my experience. I am very lucky that I served in uh, 14 Guards. I directly joined 14 Guards after my recruitment as a soldier. In which year was was it, sir? it is in actually i entered joined the pulton mm -hmm. after the conduct after the completion of training okay. on 13th january 1960 1971 okay. exactly on the raging day of the pulton okay. i am very lucky i i joined the pulton on on its raging day okay. in 71 okay. yeah and uh, very lucky when my pulton was in uh, mijo hills okay. that time it was a district of assam mm -hmm. and uh, our unit was spread over battalion headquarter was in uh, lungle okay and company are located uh, alpha company is with battalion headquarter in lungle bravo company was in dimagiri mm -hmm. Charlie Company is at Lungsen and Delta Company Bun Bun, Bun Bun, and Alpha Company was commanded by Major Osho Kumar Tara Sir, mm -hmm. uh, Bravo Company Major Om Prakash Kohli Sir, and Charlie Company was Major Balwant Sir, mm -hmm. Balwant Rao Sir, and Delta Company. In fact, that time in Mizo Hills, mm -hmm. it was uh, uh, Major Surjit Singh. Surjit Singh. Surjit Singh. He is no more now. So, this is the deployment, general deployment, mm -hmm. and two I C uh, commanding officer was Lieutenant Colonel George Clifton. George Clifton. Ha, George Clifton was he raised the Pulton. Okay. He raised the Pulton, and uh, first two I C uh, Major P P S Chatria. He was. I see, and uh, that time when I joined, uh, that time to I see was Major Dharampal, okay. and uh, <coughs> Quartermaster was Captain B B Lal, uh, Adjutant was Captain Narendra Birman Singh. They are the officers, and uh, a very good experience from the beginning because we involved. Pulton was involved in the CIA ops against Mizo, Mizo terrorists. Yeah, yeah. Okay. and uh, that time the Mizo leader was uh, Mr. Lal Denga. Later on, he became the Chief Minister of newly um, state, new state Mizoram. And uh, those days he was a terrorist, and he was the terrorist leader. <coughs> and we are fighting against him. i took you to directly to the concern of 71 war mm -hmm. uh, what happened 
Okay, when we were in uh, Lungle, the time, uh, even people, what they are saying, but I, practically I have seen, people start, start coming to India through Karnapuli River, mm -hmm. Karnapuli River source, because that is a route, uh, river route, directly joining from, at uh, that time, East Pakistan. Okay. <clears throat> so, people, after getting a lot of ill treatment from the Pakistan. West Pakistani, they used to come, they started coming and we got some information and initially we were involved in making some sketches. Like I remember, I, some, uh, some Mukti Bhaini, that time exactly Mukti Bhaini was not raised, but people, those who were coming in, they they provided some information and uh, one I made it fair and submitted to our uh, commanding officer of George Clifton sir uh, a sketch of Barkal Dam. There is a plan to destroy damage by the explosive. Uh, that who plan to destroy? Mukti Bahini. Mukti Bahini, yeah. So that uh, design, that sketch was given to us and I made it a fair copy. Mm -hmm. and put up to uh, George Clifton sir because I was in the intelligence section mm -hmm. and though I was very junior but uh, due to my artistic uh, creativity I used to make sketches for the Walton and they, used to, they, they, they like me. Mm -hmm. So in the meantime what happened uh, Alpha Company under Major Tara sir uh, practically Major Tarasar shifted his location to Dimagiri and he, sta he started establishing uh, Mukti Bhaini camps in Dimagiri and refugee camps also. Okay. So I was also given order to go to Dimagiri and um, help them, mm -hmm. help Colonel Tarasar's company. So I have seen and I remember a lot many things that time. People used to come and you know, keep people of various category like uh, subdivisional officers, judges, uh, lawyers, police officers and media core officers of civilian officers uh, like uh, you can say ki our RTOs mm -hmm. and uh, excise inspectors, uh, supply inspectors, they are very many high standard people and their family, with the, they used to come by with the family and when they entered India as a refugee I see their psychology, they were very much because here they got nothing mm -hmm. and they are on the ration scale of India mm -hmm. and they are living very pitiful life like students of universities, colleges and uh, many young uh, sir, Young, young servants of uh, government of Pakistan, uh, the Bengalis, many betrayed people I have seen, they have come because, you know, the poor people, they, they are adjusting within the environment. Mm -hmm. But the people who are of higher status, it was a very bad time for them. And when I visit their huts, we used to make uh, bamboo huts for them for the big people also, but for the aristocratic families, we used to make big huts. Uh, so I used to visit there uh, under the instruction of Colonel Tarasar and uh, to get some information from the students, from the engineering students, uh, from various type of people. Up. So when I see their condition, like subdivisional officers and um, uh, engineers, assistant engineers, junior engineers, and uh, executive engineers, their families, uh, they were living very lavish life in their country. But when they come as a refugee, you can see, you can read the lot of money, pity, their sorrowfulness from their. It was very pathetic condition. I am telling you, it was a really pathetic condition for the refugee. Hundreds of refugees were uh, setting camps there, right. and there was a military wing of uh, their Bukti Bahini camp also established there and we made one sand model for them. 
as though since I was in the intelligence section, uh, I and with the help of my one of my senior, uh, we used to make uh, we have made uh, sand models uh, for of the front area and the it will under the instruction of Colonel Tara and Colonel Kohli it was made and time to time it was it is changing we used to make according to the target we used to make the different different sand models to brief the uh, parties uh, Mukti Bhaini parties for launching operation inside so when they are, they used to go to, for the operation they are briefed and when they come back from the operation they are debriefed also so people when they go for the raid or any kind of uh, operation but most of the cases when they come back uh, there are they suffer a lot of casualties and their comrades are not coming in a full you know, if their strength is I mean, their operational strength is about 20 are going across the border after they are coming only 7, 8, sometimes 10, 12 and all by balance I, I listen those who were killed other way or, uh, yeah and uh, I remember uh, many uh, many things which actually it is the, the historical things in our Pultan I'll describe one thing when once my CEO uh, Colonel uh, Lieutenant Colonel George Clifton sir and uh, adjutant captain N.B. Man Singh and R.P. Habildar, intelligence Havildar and myself we, uh, we are 16 total 16 people some Mukti Bhaini guides we went to inside Pakistan that time East Pakistan, uh, East Pakistan. that time the, actually our operation has not been started it is in the month of uh, I think it is in the month of July, July 1971. And I remember uh, we carry one motor boat lunch, and it is it was a covered covered uh, lunch, mm -hmm. and that is a 16 member or 20 25 capacity boat, and we went into that uh, Karnapuli River. Mm -hmm. We sailed up to about 12 kilometer inside Pakistan. East Pakistan and on the left side of the left bank of the Karnapuli river when if you sail from Dimagiri uh, towards Sitagong mm -hmm. because this uh, river goes and joins with the Bay of Bengal in Cox's Bazar okay. okay so we used to sail we, we, we sailed from Dimagiri 12 kilometer inside Pakistani territory and we halted one place. It was it was a company of uh, four East Pakistan rifles, four EPR. Okay. Four. If I am not wrong, I remember. Mm -hmm. So there was a darbar was arranged. Mm -hmm. They were very well under Pakistan army that time. Mm -hmm. And one darbar was arranged, and uh, my CEO was addressing uh, George Clifton. Oh, there was only one. Uh, wooden chair was available and on that wooden chair George Clifton sat down and rest people we sat on the ground and EPR boys also sat on the ground our soldiers and uh, our NCOs also sat on the ground only the officers and JCOs they, they, they are given some uh, we, uh, ration bags and packs pitu mm -hmm. to sit and jerry cans mm -hmm. and by the because this is the modified uh, availability of the seat and there is no chair only one wooden chair was available for the CEO so CEO was literally take, taken a darbar of Pakistan, Ar Pakistan army soldiers I mean, they, they had defected, they had defected. Uh, not defected that time okay. they were still under command of Pakistan army and taking the command of pa Pakistan army taking orders also from them okay. and but they they yeah, yeah, they, they sent a message to our CEO that we are going to defect and please help us through ration, ammunition and clothing etc. in case oh. there So my CEO promised them, okay, you will get everything and we come back. When I remember today, 
it is a unique event i think it is not available anywhere in the world ki one enemy co is a mane co of a co of a mere country is taking the darbar of a enemy company and it is so the, there is no photography was available that time so when our pultan was conducting now golden jubilee in 22 1922 from 3 december 22 to uh 7 december 22 so i have made few uh, panorama sketches mm-hmm. in which i made this one also uh, the sketch of this darbar mm-hmm. so it is giving a lot of pleasure to me because i was a witness to that and many people who were there on that day mm-hmm. i think nobody is now alive everybody is uh, died. Right? yeah so this happened and ultimately george clifton sir also posted out mm-hmm. and brigadier channa the time lieutenant colonel channa bn channa vijay narayan channa joined as commanding officer and i have seen one unique thing also you know ki there was a uh, mm, yeah there is troops mane element of two to establishment Ah, that special command, frontier force. Special frontier force uh, under uh, Sujan Singh, Singh Urban. General yeah, General Sujan Singh Urban. That troop also came and they were rehearsing, doing training just in front of us in, a, in our helipad, the Magiri helipad. The Magiri. Yeah, I have seen and I have seen the helicopter. That helicopter uh, that is me. MI4 MI4 helicopter it is, it is flown by the legendary um, squadron leader uh, yes, yeah yeah rustam ji so so actually this uh, event i have seen in my eyes mm-hmm. and these guys they did wonder it on a reading number of locations of the and uh, uh, deep they gone and deep operation up to chitagon mm-hmm. so it was all happened in front of me and we then then we we were shifted to agartala okay agartala it so we we shifted to lower agartala agartala there is a place called dukli dukli did you launch an attack on the tst no no i am telling you please listen not before we we were moved we we moved to agartala in the month of august and september mm-hmm. agartala there is a uh, about 12 km uh, 12 km south of agartala there is a place called gudukli okay so dukli was our con- concentration area mm-hmm. where we dug in and we started training actually we were given lot of training accordingly according to the terrain of bangladesh mm-hmm. so i am i am just a soldier i was just a soldier so my knowledge is limited to uh, ground level things i do not know what is the planning mm-hmm. planning of the operation and only i am i am remembering my memory i am i am telling you the facts which i have seen there say so on uh, uh, it was told to us that uh, there is a place uh, called dholai tea factory where pakistan army has some elements on the border post and it was occupied by about one company plus so it was attacked by second jat and 13 rajri mm. if i am not wrong 13 13 rajri or which rajri uh, mm. not 13 i think i have to find it oh to so one rajri battalion and second jat mm. one brigade attacked it and even brigadier yadav was also its commander mm-hmm. so well, what yeah. happened that attack was successful mm-hmm. but they suffered heavy casualty due to due to their maybe their maybe their daytime attack or wrong planning or whatever or leakage of information uh, i cannot tell you exactly what happened but um, second jat and jarajrip and plus uh, even the brigade commander was also wounded mm-hmm. even the brigade commander was lying in the battlefield and his uh, 
মানে হি ওয়াজ ইন ইন এ সিভিয়ার কন্ডিশন ইজ লেগ ওয়াজ ভেরি ব্যাড মানে ব্যাড স্টেট সো অল অফ এ সডেন উই হ্যার টোল্ড এন্ড উই হ্যার কমপ্লিট ফোটিং গার্ডস ওয়াজ সেন্ট টু অ্যাটাক দ্যাট ডলাই টি ফ্যাক্টরি এন্ড অন অন আই থিঙ্ক টোয়েন্টি এইট অক্টোবর অন টোয়েন্টি এইট অক্টোবর উই মুভ টু ফ্রম ডুগলি টু কমালপুর কমালপুর ধর ইজ এ এয়ার স্ট্রিপ এন্ড অন টোয়েন্টি নাইন্থ অফ নভেম্বর ওয়েন অক্টোবর অক্টোবর ওয়েন উই অ্যারাইভড এট ঢলাই সরি কমালপুর দের ইজ লড অফ আওয়ার ওন ইন্ডিয়ান ট্রুপস বডিজ ডেড বডিজ ইয়ার দেয়ার এন্ড কভার উইথ হোয়াইট হোয়াইট বেডশিটস সো ইট ওয়াজ গিভিং এ প্যানিক সাইকোলজিক্যাল মানে ফিয়ার ফর আস বিকজ উই আর ভেরি ইয়ং এন্ড দিস ইজ দ্য ফার্স্ট টাইম উই আর সিইং দ্য ব্যাটল ক্যাজুয়ালিটিজ সো আফটার দ্যাট আওয়ার রেকি পার্টি ওয়েন্ট টু রেকি দ্য এরিয়া টোটাল এরিয়া দ্য দ্য টাইম রেকি পার্টি কম্প্রাইজেস অফ কমান্ডিং অফিসার মেজর অশোক ওম প্রকাশ কোহলি এন্ড ইন্টেলিজেন্স অফিসার মল্লি সেকেন্ড লেফটেন্ট পি এস মল্লি এন্ড দে আর গাইডেড বাই দ্য ইন্টেলিজেন্স হাবিলদার অফ রাজরিফ সো দে দে আর মুভিং এন্ড ক্লোজ টু দ্যাট অবজেক্টিভ ঢলাই অবজেক্টিভ ঢলাই ইজ এ টি ফ্যাক্টরি ডিফেন্ডেড মেড ইন টু এ ডিফেন্ড লোকালিটি বাই পাকিস্তান আর্মি সো ওয়েন দে মুভিং টু ক্লোজ টু সি দ্য এনিমি মুভমেন্ট দ্য এনিমি ফায়ার্ড এম এম জি পস্ট টু হিট দ্যাট ইন্টেলিজেন্স হাবিলদার এন্ড ইন্টেলিজেন্স হাবিলদার ডায়ড অন দ্য স্পট রাজরি ইয়া সো বাট ওয়ান স্প্লিন্টার অফ উইচ ওয়ান বুলেট স্প্লিন্টার অলসো হিট মেজর কোহলিস ফিঙ্গার so he was also injured and that happened and after that we we were moved to dalai and uh, we moved to dalai and uh, by about the time 3 o'clock 2 2 o'clock by 2 2 pm we reached there and uh, ব্রিড চন্না কর্নেল চন্না দ্য টাইম লেফট কর্নেল চন্না হি কেম টু আস এন্ড হি টোল্ড ক্লিয়ারলি লুক দিস পাকিস্তান ইজ গোয়িং টু সেল ইউ বেডলি এন্ড দ্য ফার্স্ট সেলিং উইল স্টার্ট এট দ্য এক্সাক্টলি এট ফাইভ ফাইভ পি এম সো বি কেয়ারফুল এন্ড ইউ বিফোর দ্যাট ইউ মাস্ট মেক ইউর সেল প্রুফ বঙ্কার্স so we started making our self proof bunkers uh, in the dalai t there was actually by the time we reached dalai dalai that a force was that pakistani they they have good run good run about uh, i think 1 km 2 km they, they they fell back so we took position and we started digging and we make uh, our uh, bunkers mm-hmm. and in the meantime what happened ki we, we removed all the bullies and uh, cgi sheets from the tea factory and we, we by means of that bully and cgi sheet we make our bunkers stronger but to our surprise exactly at 5 pm exactly at 5 pm pakistani started bombarding selling started at 5 pm and selling was massive they did not give a chance to stand and but in spite of that we started making our defense stronger and uh, but uh, colonel channa has given very strict instruction that this is the tactics of pakistan army to counter attack mm-hmm. but be prepared to repulse their attack but don't 
expend your ammunition. Don't spend your ammunition unnecessarily. He was very true and throughout the night the selling continued but uh, we also make our bunkers stronger and stronger and we we are on our bunkers even delta company mm -hmm. uh, got something elements some elements of pakistan they came to very close to the defense of delta company and delta company um, uh, were firing against them and they were pulling the pakistanis fell back but in the early very early in the morning Pakistani counter-attack came. We were in the bunker. All of a sudden, Pakistani battle cry, with their battle cry, Allahu Akbar, they started advancing on us and they charged with furious shouting and all. But our, we started firing on them. Our medium machine guns mm -hmm. and our artillery also started selling and with massive on a with our company commanders and commanding officer who were standing there and they were giving courage to boys and that luckily that counterattack was failed and they, they, they ran, ran away from that place. But our commanding officer told us very clearly, look, they, this, this counterattack will not stop, it will keep coming. And one after another, one after another, the counter-attacks keep coming, truly keep coming. Finally, at about uh, 2 p.m., the, when the counter-attack came with full strength, then our two brave medium machine gun gunners, they, they were so, so cheerful and they were so spirited they ran in front of in to, to to give a to find a good field of fire they ran furiously in to a open ground in spite of co was shouting but they don't hear and they ran to an open ground there it was a furious scene I, we have also seen the they both are banta singh and telu singh both are naiks and they were Sardars, six. Their turban uh, flew. Their, their hairs were uh, flying in the air. And their beard and uh, hair with their machine guns and belts. It was giving a furious look. They don't care for anything. They don't care for their own safety. Mounted the a medium gun, medium machine gun on the open ground and started firing. Their firing effect was so much Pakistan's because of this medium machine gun firing, the Pakistan the last counter attack was repulsed and they suffered heavy casualty. And with this, our Charlie company boys also motivated by their company commander and Lieutenant Colonel Channa himself told them to go and kill them. So with the bayonets, Charlie Company boys attacked the retreating Pakistanis and killing many of them. In that operation, our Snipe Subhidhar Kanaya Singh and Havaldar Bhagat shown their bravery mm -hmm. and they killed the Pakistani OP officer also and uh, artillery OP officer and uh, their operator, even operator and the OP officer were brought when they were alive and doctor mm -hmm. wanted to give some morphia injection to them to save but they could not be and but uh, to our, our honor I am telling you uh, our commanding officer gave us order to make grave for all dead bodies and uh, Really, with the proper respect, we uh, give them last rites. And after about staying two days, we fell back to um, hand, handed over the objective to BSF and we fell back to uh, Dukli. Yeah. Uh, so, 
after dukli then training started and the final planning of uh, battle of gonga sagar was made so the operational planning it was not known to me because i was just a soldier mm -hmm. but i know the facts which happened in front of me so we we were given proper training and proper we were about to we were told ki we are going to attack one objective which is on a railway station that real name of the railway station is ganga sagar and ganga sagar railway station is a railway station in between uh, komila and uh, yeah sorry uh, akora akora and mane uh, chitagong that that uh, rail rail road rail line is coming from chitagong to dhaka and it is ganga sagar is about uh, about 6 to 7 km south of akora and akora was a main objective of our four mountain deep mm -hmm. so 57 mountain 57 mountain deep uh, and uh, so uh, it is necessary to capture ganga sagar because ganga sagar is capable to uh, allow reinforcement through his objective mm -hmm. and it has got two compre strength so in case of there is in case of requirement it could have been there could been possibility that ganga sagar will reinforce akora mm -hmm. so it was necessary to capture ganga sagar to facilitate the akora's capture okay so it was that operation plan was bad but before that we we make the similar kind of ground here you know same pond same railway line same band same marshy area everything was been made on ground and we do real cell number of times we made a very big sand model of ganga sagar mm -hmm. and i was also instrumental making of that before that we have got lot of map surveys i went to the dwet quarter collected the updated maps and uh, mark maps the location of the bunkers the location of the guns and all the gun positions uh, and uh, all the automatic positions everything my field etc all the whatever the intelligence collection we uh, marked on that uh, sand model and where did you get all this intelligence from? like uh, from the local from the lo from the actually di division at quarter got a lot of sources mm -hmm. they have got uh, sources they they are information from the lot of intelligence sources so they used to collect information and mark on their maps properly but uh, in but uh, practically what you you were doing our recce party also went to ganga sagar mm -hmm. and uh, i am luckily i was the part of that recce party my all company commanders uh, all company commanders did a air observation also okay. through the uh, air op flight mm -hmm. they see the ganga sagar objective from the air also and we uh, through minus with my intelligence having that i also went very close to ganga sagar and uh, i i remember from a distance we see the layout of their bunkers the location of the bunkers the gun position and it means mmg lmg etc all uh, rcls mm -hmm. and a moving uh, pakistani troops are moving from here to there one from bunker to bunker and they are not that serious about that the enemy is coming from this direction it mainly what happened ki ganga sagar actually the railway line is running from south to north south from from south uh, from south uh, southwest to northeast it was running mm -hmm. so all the mane agartala agartala if we are going from agartala the frontal frontal portion uh, is a totally marshy area okay and marshy area and uh, lot of bamboo punji jo are also laid on that marshy area so there could have been a lot of casualties mm -hmm. and our movement also 
supposed to be very slow in case we adopt that frontal attack. Mm -hmm. But after seeing the objective very carefully, when our equipment observed, there is a railway wagon is also pushed along with along the railway line through the by the Pakistani troops. Okay. Okay. Because it you see you remember uh, one wagon um, that wagon full of ration or whatever I don't know, but they were pushing the wagon on the railway line. So the assessment was made. If the, their soldiers are moving on the railway line, then there is no mine field. Mm -hmm. Mine is not laid along the railway line. So, the attack from the railway axis will be better. So, mm -hmm. our higher command means our battalion, commander and battalion, practically, I think, our 2IC and our company commanders, like Major Tara and Major Kohli, they both of them decided uh, that attack should be from the left flank and along the railway line because it is a historical decision they have taken on the time okay. after after getting this recce report and actually it, we are very lucky that this decision was um, taken by them both the company commanders have taken this decision and it was it was uh, maybe it is approved by the twice and company by battalion commander because According to my position, I only heard the things what happened. But I have, what I have seen, I am telling you. Mm -hmm. So what happened? But our planning was made in such a way that we have to cross the border on first of the first of December. Mm -hmm. Then second uh, December, second December, uh, whole day we will be at Majigacha and Maniant and uh, on the night of the 2nd December and 3rd, uh, 2nd, 3rd December night we have to attack Ganga Sagar and we will capture by the first light. So, to cover our ad uh, advance, 19 Punjab of our brigade mm -hmm. has been tasked to capture Colonel Bajar. Colonel Bajar uh, was on the axis of Agartala to Ganga Sagar. Okay. It is on the main road. There is a road from Ganga, uh, Agartala to Ganga Sagar and Colonel Bajar was about 4-5 kilometers from the border. Mm -hmm. It was occupied by a uh, company or platoon of a Pakistan. Mm -hmm. So, Colonel, one company of uh, 19 Punjab attacked that. Attacked that picture. Attacked mm -hmm. that uh, post. So, on the night of 2nd, second, 2nd second December night, 1st, 1st, 2nd, sorry, 1st, 2nd night, ko, they, uh, the 19 Punjab attacked. So, in the meantime, what we were doing, after the proper briefing on the sand model, we started our, our uh, we, we, we started our journey. But one, one thing, the high spirit of the Javans, I am telling you about one fact. We have got one Havildar Surinder symbolic, that time he was guardsman. Mm -hmm. He was uh, similar similarity with me. He, he has been given a 303 rifle. Mm -hmm. He was very much spirited and he, CEO told, Colonel Chana was a highly spirited officer. He told, uh, do you want anything, any points? So, Surinder Singh Malik very um, proudly asked, sir, can I get a 7.62 mm SLR? Both of why you can't, you, can't you fight with this 303? Well, like, yes, sir, I can fight with the 303. But if I will get a 7.62 mm SLR, I will do wonder. Okay. Well, no. I want you to do wonder with this 303 rifle. So, Surendra Singh Malik was very highly spirited man and that time he he saw his uh, spirit. And uh, you know, he, Colonel Channa was also very spirited and a gem of a person and a, I think one of the best leader of the world. So, before, just before launching the operation, he 
एज यूजली एज पर प्रोसीजर ही टोल्ड की टू ऑर्गेनाइज ए बड़ा खाना तो दर इज ए बड़ा खाना वॉज ऑर्गेनाइज एंड इन द बड़ा खाना वी ऑल वेर सीटिंग एंड सिंगिंग डांसिंग हैविंग स्मॉल सिप्स ऑफ रम एंड एंड एवरीबडी वॉज बिकॉज एवरीबडी वॉज चेयरफुल बिकॉज गोइंग फॉर अटैक एंड वील ब्लडी किल पाकिस्तानी एंड यो सो तो विथ फुल ऑफ जोस सो ब्रिगेडियर चन्ना ब्रिगेडियर चन्ना सॉरी टाइम ही वॉज लेफ्टिनेंट कॉर्नल ही कैम एंड ही इज गॉट ए वेरी यू कैन शो वि प्रेस्ड वॉयस लाइक इट ऑल बेटे हम तुमको ये पाकिस्तान को ले जाएंगे और मैं वादा करता हूं सब तुम लोग तुमको सब जिंदा लाऊंगा पाकिस्तान को बर्बाद कर दूंगा तुम लोग का तुम लोग इतिहास बनाओगे तुम लोग मेरे शेर हो दिस वॉज वेरी इंप्रेसिव एंड एवरीबडी वॉज क्वाइट एंड यू नो कि व्हाट काइंड ऑफ टेरर इज टेरिफिक मैसेज ही गैप दिस इज वन ऑफ द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ हिज हीरोजम एंड हिज पावर I'm telling you, and in between we then we started our journey on first uh, December at about four uh, p.m. We started. We crossed the international border at about seven p.m. and we reached one um, because we were moving on a, a diversary route just to. Avoid the attention of the enemy. Here on our right, 19 Bazaar was attacking Colonel Bazaar, just to divert that attention. And we are moving on a diversionary road route. So on our route, there was a big lake, and that is a bloody, very slushy lake. It was full of bones, uh, muds. It is a muddy. and uh, i am telling you my feelings when i was putting my one leg then it is very difficult to pull out it and put the second leg it is crossing was so difficult uh, we lost one uh, of our mule and this mule was carrying motor, uh, motor. 81 mm 3 inch motor ammunition we have to organize another boat there were six boats were there so we have to load it through the boats and we took about 2 3 hours extra to cross that mane muddy slushy uh, patch of lake it was a, it was a very difficult obstacle i'm telling you so we crossed that and we reached about in the early very early morning we reached majigacha then stayed about some some time there then we moved to maniand maniand we were told to make fox holes Foxholes, why? Because Pakistan aircraft air force is um, supposed to come and no. strap strap us. So, practically, Pakistan air force about 10:30 uh, a.m. in the morning, they came two sabers came and started looking for us. But we were already inside the foxhole, so they went back. And in the, as per the planning, at about uh, Second, uh, 12:30, we were told to all in, mm-hmm. and we started our journey towards the railway line. And about uh, you can say that uh, about two kilometers south of Kanga Sagar railway station, we touched the railway line. So this is the first part of his interview and to know the rest of the story tune in and wait for the next video thank you